The clamor for Nigeria's president to emerge from the southeast in 2023 is gaining momentum daily across the two major political parties, with presidential aspirants from the north and south of the country not appearing to back down. Well, political analysts say this is a major hurdle in Digbo must cross if the region hopes to produce Nigeria's next president. A former national chairman of the People's Democratic Party and ex-governor of Enugu State in the southeast region, Okwe Silese Wodo joins us to discuss this issue. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, and thank you for pronouncing that just so well. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, well, I mean, there doesn't seem to be a zoning arrangement by the two major political parties in Nigeria, talking about the APC or the PDP, when it comes, for, when it comes to the presidential ticket for 2023. And one will wonder, what are the ch chances of the South is to then produce a candidate uh, for that election? Do you think that an Igbo presidency in 2023 is a realism or is still a mirage with what we are seeing on ground? Straight away, I think it's a realism. Okay. Mm. Two, I think that's on a daily basis. We're getting stronger in that direction. Um, you must have heard President Atiku Abubakar recently saying that if, for if the presidency is zoned to the southeast, he will step down. But if he's zoned to southwest or south-south, he will not. Mm -hmm. Now, you have heard great Nigerians across the country, Edwin Clark, Ayo Debanjo, and then you, I have personally yes. visited with some leaders of the Southeast to visit IBB, to visit uh, uh, the former head of state Abdul Salami Abubakar, to visit T.Y. Danjuma, to visit General Guzo, to visit even the men I have mentioned, Ayo Adebanjo and Ike Clark. And everywhere we went, mm -hmm. we were encouraged. And they saw with us what the Southeast presidency will bring to Nigeria at this time. Peace, unity. These are two great things that are lacking in our country today. Somebody has to reunite this country. And the person who is most traumatized, most marginalized, most vilified, when the country reaches out to him, healing process has begun. The trauma of the Civil War is still with us. The day a South is now becomes president, that's the end of the Civil War. The agitation for Biafra, for Duduwa, for Middle Belt, for whatever, that is the day to cease. Then we are bringing somebody who has an answer to the economic problem of Nigeria. An ordinary Igbo man survives on the economy. We are traders. We don't go to business to lose. We go to make profit. We turn around the economy of this country to create money to solve the problems of Nigeria. We're talking about people who have sacrificed blood and sweat, everything for the unity of this country, who have paid the price. Their patriotism is not questionable. The fear of the for the people of the Southeast is fear of those who feel Southeast has been badly traumatized that giving presidency to a Southeasterner, he will come to revenge. That's not true. It's not in our DNA. As if we never revenged, Okpara never revenged on anybody. Indeed, our warlord, Odumegu Ojuku, came back and reintegrated and even contested well, to serve in the All of these names that you're mentioning, just actually, you're painting a picture of a typical evil man. But you know what? While we cannot really talk about that report that was submitted to the NEC of your party today, because of course the NEC needs to meet and deliberate. You are a member of NEC and a member of the BOT uh, for the fact that you were a former chairman. But let's talk about this whole issue of zoning and all of the conversations around it. And I want to start with what is the value of a constitution when not amended, but it's been tampered with. I ask you this because are you worried about the implication of jettisoning zoning at this point, at the detriment, some would say, to the people of the Southeast? It's not just to the people of Southeast, it's detriment to the unity of Nigeria. 
is detriment to law and order, is detriment to constitutionalism. We freely, at the formation of the party, enacted in our constitution the policy of zoning and rotation. Why is it that this time, when the South is, is the best position to benefit from the zoning and the rotation, all sorts of stories and drama is on stage. If we had simply followed the constitution of PDP, definitely you should come to southern Nigeria because a northerner is exiting the presidency. So the presidency should come south. That has been the policy. It has been the covenant. Why change the goalposts at the middle of the game? And if it comes to southern Nigeria, people have said, why should Fayoshe by form from Southwest, Queen of Basanjo served eight years, mm -hmm. and Osibanjo is serving vice president for eight years. Why should South South, why should we get by form? Queen, good luck, Jonathan, did two years of vice presidency and six years of presidency, and the Southeast has not done. Southeast, since independence of Nigeria, has only been at the executive position for seven months, Agui Ronsi. Nobody has been elected president from the Southeast. Well, thank you for painting such a beautiful profile of an evil person, uh, because there's a lot of stereotype uh, towards the tribe. But the discourse in some quarters is that the inability of the South is to put up a united front, either at the government or political elite level or the people level, has been the bane. For instance, we have governors who are not in support of a consensus candidate that some of the aspirants are pushing. We also have the youth, some youths in the region who are agitating for a Biafra. So what do you say to people like that? I mean, you see them as stereotype because you've painted a picture of an evil man, but these issues exist. Is, why is it difficult for the South is to put up a united front? Well, let me say first of all that no part of Nigeria has ever put up a united front. Mm -hmm. So don't take it against the Southeast. Mm -hmm. Nobody. There has never been any time we zoned the presidency and there was a united front. The last time in Port Harcourt, there were more than eight aspirants from northern Nigeria. It was zoned to northern Nigeria. And at the end of the day, Atiku picked the ticket and defeated the others. And they all supported and we all supported and took him to the election. So there has never been that kind of unanimity anywhere. Nigerians are Republicans, especially Igbos. There is no straight line. Our diversity and our strong ability to criticize the status quo for something better is our strength. So everybody is talking from his own point of view of Nigeria today. Why do you blame those who say Biafra? Why don't you engage them and find out why they're saying Biafra? Mm. Don't you think that Nigeria has the capacity to solve whatever problems that these children are agitating for? There's no problem in this country that is beyond Nigeria, united, together, that cannot be solved. So, the, 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 the major aspirants from the Southeast have started meeting mm. without even the efforts that some of us are making mm. to get religious leaders, traditional leaders to talk to them, to say, look, only one person can be president. Let's, they're already talking amongst themselves. Well, I like, that the is monumental that really. I like the fact that you've actually touched on that because this actually leads me to my next question. Um, is there a possibility? We've heard talks of a, a consensus candidate emerging from the PDP. Is there a possibility of that consensus candidate being from the Southeastern extraction? What are you doing, leaders from the Southeast, what are you doing within the PDP to ensure that this happens? Well, as I said, we are happy they are talking to themselves. Mm. We're also making efforts to assist them to arrive at a consensus. Because if we get a consensus from the South, it's, it's easier to sell that consensus to the rest of the party and Nigeria. Mm. Okay? The North is also making efforts to get a consensus. And they have, they have, they have been consulting widely too. Yeah. This, the, the Electoral Act has clearly spelled out consensus as one of the uh, ways that which candidates can emerge. So everybody's trying it out. But where it fails, you go to the primary and let the delegates vote for the candidates. And whether they're doing direct primaries, let members of the party vote for the candidates. 
Some would say the, the South East has been loyal to the PDP for such a long time. And this should not even be a debate we should be having. And this should not be a conversation coming up. It should have been zoned strictly to the South East. Uh, do you feel that your party has betrayed, betrayed the South East? Is this a betrayal? I, I don't want to use that strong word, betrayal. So what is it? Because what I want to say is that, well, individuals have ambitions, mm -hmm. which they're entitled to. But at the end of the day, superior argument must prevail. When we formed this party, every election that was contested in the Southeast was won by the PDP. All councillorship elections in all the five states, mm -hmm. all the local government chairmen in all the five states, the same thing with members of the House of Assembly, all the governors, all the National Assembly members, all were won by PDP in Southeast. It is the injustice meted to people in the South is from time to time that has depleted that monumental support of South East for the PDP. And we think that this is the time to reverse it. All right. Well, time to reverse it. That's what you say. But of course, I know we'll be having conversations with you because interesting times we're Indeed. about to get into. Uh, Okweseles Mwodo, former governor of Enugu State and of course, former chairman of the PDP. Thank you so much for joining us Thank tonight you. My pleasure. on Thanks the very much. program.